blue screening your freaking backup camera, dude. Okay. Hold on. Literally Ten, trying to reboot 11, 12, a head unit. 13, 14. It's a good thing I can count to 30. If we have 31, I'm screwed. Yay, we got it to reset. So it takes an entire minute to reboot a truck. That's... <laughs> how is this... Techno How's this the future right now? These things are supposed to be flying. All right, so now that we got the stupid radio figured out in the truck, we are heading down to Micro Center because now that all of the cards have been shown, everyone's CPUs and stuff are out, minus Intel's 10th gen coming who knows when, we are going to do what we do every single year around here, and that is build a cheap budget gaming computer that doesn't suck. You know what, guys? I got new merch. It's available now. Crowdme.com slash JC Sense. We got zip up hoodies. We got tri blend. We got a new logo. I digress since 2012. It's a digress logo. You guys have been asking for that. But anyway, we're all going. Blah, blah, blah. We got all kinds of stuff zip up hoodies, beanies, polos. Don't take my word for it because obviously I can't do this ad. So just look in the description below and you guys will find the link. Thanks. <laughs> Now there's a bunch of different ways that you can do this, and a lot of people like to go from the mindset of build the cheapest computer possible, take all the parts, sort by lowest price, buy the top of the lowest price, and then just put it together and see what happens. But we've done that in the past, and what we've often found is that there is a terrible diminishing return, I guess backwards diminishing return, where you spend too little, and then you really sacrifice in areas that you didn't need to if you just spent a little more. So our logic here is kind of like, sort by lowest price and then buy like two or three items up from the lowest price. Now we don't have a set price goal that we're going for here. A lot of people like to do a challenge of like $500, $700, whatever, and then don't go a dollar above that. We are just going for save as much money as possible, see what it costs at the end of the day, and then compare the performance. Now we are heading down to Micro Center. And I am paying for this out of my own money because you think differently versus like, oh, I can just pick parts off the shelf and it's easy to add 20 here and add 10 there and add five there because that's what you had. Most people don't have part shelves to so just go grab parts off of. So we're heading down here and spending our own money because that makes you really think differently on where you want to save five, save 10, spend 10. And uh, we think we put together a pretty good list of parts. Now what we're also gonna do, because we head to Micro Center, we often get pushback from the audience, especially those that don't live near a Micro Center because you can't buy a graphics card and you can't buy CPUs online at Micro Center. That's often because their bundle deals and their prices are so low, below MAP or minimum, minimum advertised price, price in most instances, uh, people are like, I can't buy it, so that's not fair. So whatever we end up with, we're gonna also show you what it would've cost you at, at uh, Newegg and what it would've cost you at Amazon, at least locally in the region that I'm at. So let's go and see what we end up with. Oh, it's overexposed. Okay, so we're at Micro Center here in Tustin, California. There's only one Micro Center in California. I always get people like, which Micro Center in California? There's only one. And I'm fortunate enough to live, fortunate enough to live within about an hour of it. So here are the parts we ended up with. We'll start with the case. This is like the third time I've gone with a Corsair Carbide Series Speco 2 case because a case is just a box you put your parts in. Of course, it's responsible for airflow, but the logic here is always get the cheapest case you can stand to look at that has decent airflow is the way I always go with that. And this, the value for this case, I mean, here at Micro Center, we got it for $59.99. Now, yes, there are cases that you could get for like $49 or $44, bucks, but those either had terrible airflow or they included only one fan or no fans at all. This includes three fans, which means we didn't have to add fans to the case, which meant we were able to keep the price down because the cheapest fans you could buy, even for like $120, is going to be something like uh, $10 bucks a piece. And so you buy two or three of those, now you're up into like the $60, $70 range, which made this the better buy. So when it comes to our the rest of our parts here, we'll just kind of go through it and talk about the price at the end. I went with a Ryzen 2600, and the reason for this, and people are gonna be like, well, wait a minute, isn't Zen 2 out? Well, yes, it is, but do you remember that video I did where I said, don't buy anything yet, please, for the love of God, wait, don't buy. It's because we knew these price slashes were coming. When I say, I don't mean drop, I mean slash. The Ryzen 2600 versus the 3400G was kind of where I was shopping. But the value for the 3400G comes in the fact that it's an APU and has a, a graphics card built into it, still running on Vega graphics. So what we decided to do is go with the 2600, which gives us more cores and doesn't have functionality that we don't need. Now to couple that with a board that has value with it, we went the B450M. And even if you're running a Zen 2 or a brand new 3000 series AMD, we still recommend B450 if you're not looking to push overclocks too far, or you're not running you know, the high-end SKUs or something like the, you know, 
what, what 12 core 24 thread still has a decent enough 4 plus 3 digital power design so you can still overclock on this have reliability m.2 slot and when you couple the bundle deal of this motherboard with this processor at micro center you get 30 bucks off which made this only cost like 44 dollars the firm value for 1080p gaming lies with polaris so the rx 578 gigabyte at Micro Center, we got it here for $149.99. If you use user benchmarks to compare this to anything from NVIDIA, you've got to spend $200 or more to get the same performance you're getting out of this with 1080p gaming and rasterization, RTX and all that aside. At the price point we're shopping here, DXR is not something you're gonna to get to experience. If you just want good frame rate, plenty of frame buffer or eight gig frame buffer, this is where we shopped right here. You could have gotten a 580 for a few bucks more, but again, we are going for value here. In terms of storage, a two terabyte Seagate Barracuda 7200 RPM drive coupled with the BX500 from Crucial. So the two terabyte drive was 49, the 580 or 480 gigabyte drive was $49. The SSD storage has definitely come down and I'm sorry, but 500 megabytes a second is plenty of read write for most people. Um, RAM, no, not, not that RAM. Now RAM was one of those things where when we were trying to do our budget builds and stuff last year, it was extremely hard because RAM prices were through the roof. We could not get 16 gigabytes for under $180 last year. So we've got 16 gigabytes of G-Scale Aegis 3000 megahertz memory, which is perfect for Zen uh, Ryzen 2000 series for, you ready for this? Where is it? I can't even find it. I'm not ready for it. $59.99. Two eight gigabyte, 3000 megahertz sticks, CL16 for 60 bucks. The sadness came when you drop your power <laughs> supply. The sadness came from the fact that our power supply was 80 bucks. We had a hard time shopping for a power supply. We used to be able to get 500 to 600 watt bronze rated power supplies for $50 all day long. Now we went with a bigger power supply than we need for this build because we didn't want to destroy future upgradability by having a power supply that was only enough for this system, which means you can't plop in a bigger graphics card or a higher end Zen uh, CPU or something because you'd be at the ragged edge of where it's safe for your power supply. So we have a CX650M semi-modular. Stop it! It's a bronze rated power supply, which is uh, plenty for this build. So what is our grand total here at Micro Center? With tax, $660 and 42 cents. And no, that's not the cheapest PC we could build, but like we explained at the beginning, this is the best value we think we could build without going too expensive. And I think the performance we're gonna get for this price is going to be at least one and a half, maybe even closer to two X what we were able to get last year. And one other thing you also get with this that I didn't even mention is because there's a AMD promotion right now, we also have the Xbox um, PC gaming pass with this graphics card. So you get access to like that entire PC library that's available from Xbox and PC, um, I think for like three months or something like that. So there is that added value to it. All right, so what we gotta do next? We've gotta go and put it together. When it comes to performance, all we did was come in here and put a more aggressive fan curve. You still can't hear it, and the temperatures came down a lot. But we did over, uh, turn on the XMP profile, so it's 3000 megahertz memory with the CL16 timing. So we know Ryzen 2000 series likes fast memory, and uh, ironically, the 3000 megahertz was cheaper than the 2400 megahertz so of course we went with that. But let's go and get in here to Doom. Now what we're caring about here is the Magic 60 FPS, and that's all we get in the menu, but as soon as we load up something, let me, I don't know, Titan's Realm, there we go, we'll do that. This is just arcade mode, rack up as many points as you can get. We are running the Vulcan API, so if we go to video, you can see 1080p right there. Anti-aliasing is SMAA. Everything else is kind of stock, motion blur off. Overall quality though, we are set to ultra. This is the first time we have done any sort of a sensible-minded budget type build where we could enable Ultra in Doom. 
We've done this in the past, but we could not run Ultra on Doom because we would start dropping below that 60 FPS. But what I wanna show you here is that we are running Ultra right now. That's the Ultra preset. We touched nothing else in there. 120 FPS right there. We are definitely getting the job done. So Doom is one of those games that has really withstood the test of time in terms of beauty. It is, the textures are amazing, the lighting is amazing, and that's why I will always test with this game. But look at the FPS right here. Again, in Ultra, 140 FPS. We've never had an experience like this at this price point. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that we have gotten massive reduction in pricing on memory and storage. But Jay, Doom's easy to run. But what about games that aren't easy to run? Well, let's go ahead and run the Far Cry 5 benchmark. Our max uh, GPU temperature in that gaming portion right there was 61. But even without overclocking the CPU, you can see this was our CPU usage in Doom. We know Vulkan is really good, but a really good API with uh, low overhead. So that is amazing right there. So here's Far Cry 5. And like I said, it's a CPU intensive title as well. And then we're using the Ultra preset with TA, uh, TAA anti-aliasing because that's what we run all of our benchmarks at. So we wanna see if we can get 60 FPS in Far Cry 5 with everything on Ultra for 1080p. I wouldn't even feel comfortable calling this a budget build at that point. I mean, it is because it's, it's low budget. I mean, a $650 PC with tax is certainly low budget, but it's not low budget experience, at least as it used to be in the past. Yeah, so minimum FPS is 54. A minimum of 54, average of 62, maximum of 74. 60 FPS plus Ultra Far Cry 5 with a $600 tower. So one of the last times we tested Dirt Rally, we, we couldn't go over like medium settings and that was, I think when we were doing like the 2400G with the APU or something like that. We're gonna go ahead and go straight to Ultra here because why the heck not? So this is another one of those titles that can be fairly CPU bound. So that's one of the reasons why I chose not to go with the 3400G. And I know I said this in the beginning of the video and I'm showing you now why I'm reiterating that choice because we had no intentions of using an APU for this price point. With the drop in prices of memory, the drop in prices for storage, and the, G the fact that you can still get an RX 578 gigabyte, at least at Micro Center for $149, is why I had absolutely no problems with dropping the APU support for four extra compute threads. And as you can see, we're sitting at 3.725 the whole time, no CPU overclock whatsoever. So these scores that you're seeing will go up if you do some sort of an overclock. But this, and I hate to sound, I hate to sound cliche, but this is butter smooth, this is buttery smooth, no stuttering, no stumbling at all. And we'll just have to see what the FPS, FPS is at the end of the run, but this, this is an amazing time to be a PC gamer, especially if you've been waiting. And if you listen to my video that I did a month or two ago, or whatever, a month ago, that said, wait, just wait. You could get this CP right now for $119 at Micro Center. Average FPS, 81.77. This is, it's funny, we get, we get to work with the, the highest end hardware in the industry, but I really nerd out over over this, over the average guy going, man, I don't have that kind of money to spend. But knowing now that you can get this level of performance and the GPU never went hotter than 61, that you can get this level of performance with just not breaking the bank. I mean, I'm not saying $600 isn't a lot of money, but I'm saying compared to what you could spend for a computer, this is a significant amount of money or significant savings of money because this computer is still fully capable of doing things like Photoshop, doing things like Premiere video rendering. And I think the six core 12 thread would actually do a pretty good job of it because I used the eight core 16 thread when Ryzen first came out. This is better IPC a little bit, but better IPC than the original 1800. And the fact that you could do live streaming with this if you wanted, you could set aside two or four cores to live streaming depending on the titles that you're playing. And it wouldn't be the highest settings, but you'd still be able to get it done. So that, my friends, is how, how it's performing. Um, if I sound like I'm at a loss for words, it's because I knew how 570 performed and I knew how 2600 performed. We've reviewed both. But the fact that we're getting this level of performance at this price point is absolutely earth shattering in my opinion when it comes to value. But I think this also stresses the very important point that I tr I've been trying to make throughout this entire video is that Sometimes the performance increase you get is exponential versus the percentage of cost increase if you shop just a little bit higher than the bottom dollar price point. What tends to happen with bottom dollar is you become uh, outdated faster 
You become left behind faster when it comes to various tech or necessity or bare minimum specs than if you shopped at something like this. I can guarantee you that this rig right here would be capable with the CPU running for another five years and being within spec of any title that would come out in that time frame. The only thing you might have to do is in two or three years upgrade the graphics card because it might fall down to minimum spec on titles as things move forward. But that's okay because we went with a little bit larger power supply, because we went with 16 gigabytes of RAM instead of eight, and because we went with the 2600 12 core or 12 thread CPU versus the bottom dollar that we could have gotten, it means the GPU is the only thing we would have to swap out. So. This video was kind of not about the level of performance that you get necessarily with this price point, but the other half of this video was triggering your way of thinking into that sometimes spending a little more will get you a lot more in the long run. All right, guys, hope this video has helped you in terms of budget-minded thoughts here in 2019. If you have some other specs of, the, of hardware that you think we should check out, we definitely will, uh, would like to do that. We are gonna be checking out the 3200G and the 3400G and how they perform APU-wise. I don't expect it to be a huge improvement over the Vega stuff because, or the 2400 and 2200G, except for CPU tests because it's running the same Vega graphics. I can guarantee you there'll be something Navi based coming out in the future, but that is a long ways away before I'm sure AMD is ready to talk about any of that. And that's just purely speculation on my part. So guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you know someone that's shopping for PC parts right now, share this video with them. Even if they don't go with these parts, it might change the way they think and it might give them more performance for just a little bit more money in the long run. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. So one of the last times we tested Doom 3, or... <laughs> yeah, Doom 3, <laughs> and action. So one of the last times we tested Dirt 3, we Dirt could... Rally. Where's the three coming from? Everything went down, everything, <laughs> everything. Everything. It's like we might know a thing or two about how the sales of electronics work in this industry.